Well, hello, well, welcome to Raccoon Point Studios. I'm Sean Bombs, and today I want to share with you how I got the SSL controllers to work with DaVinci Resolve. Um, quick backstory, I am a recording engineer, music producer, musician all around. But um, I've always been into photography and videography, and in the past few years I got really serious with the videography side and uh, photography and a little bit of cinematography, if you will, but I wouldn't consider myself a movie maker in any shape or form, but I do music videos, um, YouTube videos, and book trailers and stuff like that. Um, any kind of content creation in that in that form. So, um, you know, having said that, I have a few Blackmagic cameras, and that pushed me from Final Cut into DaVinci Resolve. I was sitting in here going, okay, I'm going to edit a video. I have controllers in front of me. Can I use them with DaVinci Resolve? I'm here to say I can. Here's the transport. Machine, the Tascam Porta Studio. Just going to use two microphones and I'm going to use the preamps on the Porta Studio. Stop. Now you can scrub through real quick or rewind real quick. Not the biggest deal, but it is fast. I usually use markers or my arrows or whatever in DaVinci. And I'm not really in the Fairlight page a lot. You know, um, oh, it just disconnected. That's funny right in the middle of a video cool oh there it goes it reconnected i have no idea what that was but i'm glad you got to see that because this is not a perfect solution but if you're like me and you're doing multiple tasks in your day it might help you out also this only works in the fairlight page how I stumbled upon it though was like, I was like, hey, maybe I can use my SSL plugins in here and that way I can be quicker to EQ the vocal or whatever, you know? So here you go. And then I'm able to control, you know, everything. This is for the voice, so. It's the preamps on the Porta Studio. Ah, which they you know. don't have phantom power, so I'm using two dynamic mics. I have an RE20 on the kick drum and a Shure 57 for the overhead. Take drum will out. be mono, so we're living on the edge. I got a track coming out of Pro Tools that's gonna record on the tape and the click tracks coming out of Pro Tools, but that's going into the stereo in on seven. So I can EQ really quick. I don't have to look at things, blah, blah, blah. All right. I also have a compressor on here. It also has a mix knob so I can get parallel compression. So if I'm doing this kind of stuff and the compression, I need it to be heavy, but I don't want it to mess with the articulation of the voice. You know, I can do that. And then I also have a gate in here that works really awesome too. If I want to use a gate instead of the more modern AI voice detection and stuff like that that's one thing you can use this no problem now ssl also came out with 360 link which means i can use this with any plugin that's vst3 and i'll show you that real quick so i've done that with the limiter and i have a preset that i use or whatever uh, i just gain until it's you know chopping the peak down a little bit or just keeping it in a safe spot plus i can see where my lufs are and all that crap so i just have gain see i can mess with my gain here not the biggest deal for this plugin here i did a pull tech because at the end of here i'm doing some i'm playing music so i can It's very handy for me because I'm doing tutorials, demonstrations, whatever. And sometimes I just bring in like a rough mix into DaVinci Resolve and just, you know, throw stuff on afterwards if I feel like I need to. And then also, if you look over here, my faders, I have everything, you know, right here. Um, the thing is, it, I'm not getting any readout, so I have no clue where zero is. Um, the other thing is I don't really see a way for me to do what I just did with the mouse as far as, uh, zeroing out the faders. Now where this could be useful as well is if you do automation rides in DaVinci for voiceover or whatever, if you have music on when someone's talking and you want to turn it down and, 
you know, do that kind of thing. Then it can make it a little bit easier, I guess. You put it in automation, boom, touch. It's going to know that you're doing it because these are touch sensitive. And you can draw your automation in that way and do it kind of in real time, you know. And the other thing is I also have this master bus plug in. So for anybody that's watching this that does just straight up video, the SSL uh, compressor is something that's been used on countless records since the 80s. It gives me the ability to use this for my music production part of videos so I can handle my business. You know what I'm saying? So that works out great. Also, SSL has this metering. So if you look when I play, I can see the metering over here, which means maybe when I'm in the edit page, I still have my metering over here and I don't have to perhaps have all this up. All right, so now the point of showing you what I did, because that was the point of this video, but I got away from myself. So what I did was I went into the 360 software, I went up to control setup, DAW configuration. In here you have three DAWs you can have at any given time on buttons. So you can just quickly go to them, but you can change them whenever you want to. It's just something that you can do quickly if you do these different things day in and day out like I do. One I have for Pro Tools, one I have for Logic Pro. The third one I made for Studio One because they don't have a configuration for DaVinci Resolve. The UF8 or the UF1, you just put these in layer three where Studio One is already waiting for it. It's gonna be on port, they say nine through 12, but it's really just port nine. And then you go into DaVinci Resolve, go into your preferences, and you go under control panels, and I hit use MIDI audio console, MCU compatible, and then SSL V MIDI port nine, source, SSL V MIDI port nine, destination. And that's what all you do. And if this doesn't, show up you might have to go into your system you know your audio midi audio system on your mac or whatnot and make sure that it's in the system if if you understand what i'm saying that's what i did and i have track names um you can see i named it vo and then track i only get the first four uh, letters but it is what it is all right, so that's how you do it. If you found this useful in any way, hit the like, share it with other people, um, subscribe to the channel if you're not, if you're into pro audio, video, uh, photography, all that kind of stuff. I do a lot of different things here. So um, yeah, that's it. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.